lessons in 10 minutes or less. It's Jacob again, and this is part two of the lift equation. Now, I recommend watching the first video uh, before going into the part two. In the first video, we talked about coefficient of lift as well as surface area. In this video, I want to go over air density and getting into velocity squared, and from there, just wrapping up everything uh, in the formula. So let's get started with air density. Now, when we talk air density, the formula uses one half rho. Uh, it's a Greek symbol, this lowercase p right here. And all you math uh, nuts may uh, notice that this part of the formula has got one half rho. Uh, well, the one half could technically be located anywhere in the formula and still make sense. And although you're right, but I'll explain why it's typically found or paired up with rho in the lift equation a little bit later. But density deals with the, the, the viscosity or the, uh, the thickness of the air. Now, the thickness of the air for helicopter, uh, for helicopters, air density affects how easily the rotor uh, can move air molecules around it. And for this, um, more density is going to equal better performance. So as density increases, performance increases. You get more out of the blade. But there's some factors that affects this, obviously with the air density. So the first one we'll talk about today is atmospheric pressure. And obviously we can't control this, but atmos atmospheric pressure as the pressure increases uh, due to you know different weather fronts that come in, you know, this varies day by day, region by region. But uh, increases in pressure are going to make air more dense and increase performance. So for better performance, we want higher atmospheric pressure. Uh, next thing to consider would be your altitude. Now we can affect the altitudes that we do fly, uh, but just noting that as altitude increases, the air is thinner because molecules are uh, spaced farther apart. So this is going to make the air less dense. So for uh, better performance, we want lower altitudes for more dense air. Next factor to consider the temperature. As we consider temperature, warm air expands and moves farther apart, which reduces our density. So we want a lower temperature for better performance and uh, more dense air. Last thing to consider, moisture. Moisture content of the air uh, just measures the, or just considering the amount of water vapor that's in the air. And water vapor is less, uh, uh, weighs less than dry air. And so the moisture um, kind of displaces that dry air and reduces the density in the air. So you actually want to have lower moisture uh, to increase that air density. Uh, so for best for performance, you actually want to have high atmospheric pressure with low altitude, temperature, and moisture. And vice versa, if these are all reversed, it's going to have a, uh, a reduced performance because the air is going to be less dense. It's going to be harder for those blades to move the air. Uh, the last and uh, arguably the most important part of the lift equation is going to be velocity. Keep in mind, uh, this is going to be velocity squared, um, and this is going to have your greatest uh, effect on lift. Now, why is that? Well, obviously looking at something... Uh, in the equation that's different, this thing is velocity squared. So this means that this has an exponential factor in the equation. Uh, now, as I mentioned in the other videos, um, the lift is going to affect more drastically with changes in velocity of the airflow than any other uh, condition. And this is because this is directly affecting the speed of the air or the airfoil or uh, the airspeed around the airfoil as it travels through the air. Um, so if the speed doubles, the lift is actually going to quadruple due to this exponential factor. And vice versa, uh, if velocity is halved, then lift is going to be quartered. So this loss in uh, air velocity could hold true even if, uh, uh, or could even affect other um, factors or variables in this equation. So if velocity is allowed to uh, decrease enough, you could potentially have a stall condition uh, because your angle of attack could cause a stall, it could affect your coefficient of lift. Um, also, as the uh, the speed of the airfoil uh, slows down, you could have low rotor RPM, causing a coning condition, reducing your surface area. So, it's important to uh, consider velocity squared because not only does it affect uh, lift exponentially, 
but it's also going to be or have a multivariable influence in the lift equation. Now the last thing I want to consider is uh, what I talked about earlier with the one half uh, rho times the velocity squared. You might have seen this formula before and this is going to be the formula actually for dynamic pressure. Now dynamic pressure, uh, if you remember from um, other lessons in textbooks, stuff like that, this is going to be used by your pitot tubes to measure airspeed. Um, it, this is why it's commonly used together in the lift equation because usually our, some textbooks will refer to this as the lift equals the coefficient of lift times surface area times dynamic pressure. But for this we just broke it down piece by piece. Alright, so the biggest takeaways um, from this is that each variable in the lift equation, if it increases, will increase lift. If it decreases, it will decrease lift. But by far, velocity squared is going to have the greatest impact. Alright, so that wraps up the lift equation. Uh, don't forget to hit like and subscribe below. If you have any questions or comments, leave those as well. Uh, but thanks for watching, and as always, I'm Jacob, and this has been Helicopter Lessons in 10 Minutes or Less. Thanks for watching.